welcome to another weekly reading vlog. <laughs> My name's Melissa and I actually am headed out to go get a library book and Taco Bell. <laughs> and um, I have a very, I have a very exciting plans today. Um, I have a book coming in the mail as well that I am so excited for. Um, I think I'm actually gonna literally pick it up today, like once it comes in. So I will show you guys once I get it, but I thought I would just start and say hi. Um, but yeah, I need to go, I'm starving. <laughs> um, and I will check in with you guys in a little bit. Hey guys, so I'm actually here waiting at my library. Um, they have very specific instructions to pull up to their parking pickup area and then enter the lot number you're in and then they'll come out with your book. So yeah, I'm here. Um, I'm liking the system though, like very safe. Um, with my bacon crumb trap. Um, but yeah, so the library book I'm picking up is um, Wicked and the Wallflower by Sarah McLean. Um, I am buddy reading this with Dylan from Dynamic Dylan. He is a recent um, new subscription of mine and he is seriously like, if you are looking for such a good, fun, silly time, he is perfect. He's so funny. Every episode or every, uh, every video I watch from him is hilarious. And like he does unboxings and his unboxing for Bay Crate, I think, one of the romance subscription boxes recently, maybe not even recently. <laughs> Anyways, it was just so funny. I was dying laughing. Um, so yeah, we're going to buddy read this together. I'm so excited. Um, I don't think he's read many historical romances, so it's going to be his first maybe his first attempt at one and then this is my first attempt at a Sarah McLean so um I know she's a really beloved author and specifically um Crystal from Crystal's Bookish Life loves her so um I'm I'm in good hands I'm in good hands I'm sure but yeah Taco Bell did me dirty though I clearly ordered Di Diablo sauce and they gave me mild and this spice girl loving heart <laughs> loves spice and so anyways i'm still eating it mild is still good but they've never gotten my uh sauce order wrong before but anyways um i also have like i said before book mail coming today for a book that i am very excited to read um, I'm hoping, because work is so super slow this week, that um, I can start it today and we'll see where, like how long it takes me. It's a romance, so I don't think it'll take me that long, but I will talk about more. I'll talk about that more once I get home and once I'm done eating, because I don't want you guys to just like watch me gorge myself in Taco Bell. <laughs> Anyways, I will talk to you guys later. We got the goods, guys. Yes. <laughs> so, I'm back from getting my book mail and I'm so excited. <laughs> um, but let me give you a recap of my reading this past weekend. So, I finished Wives and Daughters. It was amazing. It was so good. It ended on such a good high note. Um, and actually I was surprised by the ending because I knew going in that Elizabeth Gaskell actually passed away before she finished the book. She had like one or two chapters left before she, um, she passed. So anyways, um, they ended up wrapping up the book, um, just like the editors of the book. She left it off in a good place where, honestly, I wouldn't have been mad at the ending, but then they they contributed a little bit more to it. And the last paragraph, oh no, they got their squeaky toy. 
So they had concluding remarks and um, I just want to read the last paragraph. So one second, Lily, one second. So the last paragraph says, but we will not permit ourselves to write any more in this vein. It is unnecessary to demonstrate to those who know what is and what is not true literature that Mrs. Gaskell was gifted with some of the choicest faculties bestowed upon mankind, that these grew into greater strength and ripened into greater beauty in the decline of her days, and that she gifted us with some of the truest, purest works of fiction in the language, and she was herself what her works show her to have been, a wise, good woman. I love that. I love that that just so poignant um, dedication to her. So anyways, yes, I highly recommend you guys need to pick this up if you're a classics reader or even if you're not and you're looking to dive in. This is a great place to start. I loved it. <laughs> so now on to the book mail. Um, so I'll first start off with showing you guys my latest library pickup. Um, Wicked in the Wallflower by Sarah McLean. I picked this up. Um, I'm gonna buddy read with Dylan. I think I've already said this in my other clip, but yes, so exciting. I mean, they even have the step back in here. I'm not showing the library, but <laughs> whatever. Um, but yeah, so exciting. I'll, I'll start this on Thursday, by the way. So Jen made a video where she talked about star-crossed lovers, which is one of my star-crossed enemies to lovers, which is one of my favorite tropes, if not my favorite trope. And um, she actually dedicated the video to me and it was so, so sweet of her. And anyways, I was so stoked about it and wanted to read one of the books that she recommended. And since I haven't really dived into dark romance all too much, I thought that I would give one of her top recommendations a try and that book is <laughs> untouchable by sam mariano <laughs> so actually this is an um an indie pubbed book which i have never bought one before um so anyways <laughs> yeah there's a lot of firsts happening with this book but um from what i know uh, it's a very, very dark romance, and it starts off with an assault scene. She told me, like, she DM'd me, and I asked her about these books. Anyways, she told me that this book starts off with a very, very intense assault scene, rape scene, and if you can get past those scenes and then, um, you know, commit to the rest of the story, that it is so good and so worth it. Um, so anyways, I, I'm glad that I know that going in so that I can prepare myself, but I'm going to give this a shot. Let's see how many pages it is. Um, oh wow. It's actually decently long. So it's 480 pages. So I was hoping I could do this in one or two days. I don't know if that's going to happen. We'll see. Um, but I'm planning on going to the pool with uh, my husband today because work is super slow and his work is also really slow. So we're gonna go and hang out. <laughs> it's like 90 degrees in Phoenix. Um, and I'm gonna take this book along and get started on it. And I will let you guys know my thoughts. Um, it's very exciting. <laughs> so yes. Hey everyone, <laughs> cheers. I just woke up from a glorious nap. Oh my gosh. I don't know what it is about the sun, but it drains me. I don't know if you guys are the same, but if I go and tan or, you know, just hang out in the sun for a long time, I'm out. <laughs> so I did get a bit more of this red. Um, one second. So yeah, I got a bit more of this red, um, Untouchable by Sam Mariano. Um, I'm to chapter five, so about 50 pages in now. Um, so I can tell you the plot of this book so far, um, 
basically it's about this girl named Zoe and this football jock named Carter and um, she gets sexually assaulted. So really trigger warnings for that, honestly. Um, major, <laughs> uh, major trigger warnings for sexual assaults. Um, but she, yeah, she gets assaulted by um, Carter and um, two other jock friends of his. It's, I mean, it says on the be on the front, it says a dark romance. And then um, all of it, like at the very beginning, it says a bully romance. So like, you know, going in, that's what it's going to be about. But um, yeah, so it follows Zoe who um, uh, meets Carter in this way. And then um, after that happens, she goes home and is staying, you know, recovering, you know, like how you would. And um, anyways, Carter shows up to her house with chicken noodle soup <laughs> and um, is kind of like putting on this like nice guy facade for her family. And she's so confused by it. And they kind of have this back and forth going on. Um, she stood up for herself in this scene. I, I was really impressed by that actually. Um, she didn't go down without a fight and, um, anyways, so I think she was somewhat turned on by it though and anyways, I think there's just some kind of underlying dynamic going on with their relationship. Um, that's not just one way, if that makes any sense. So that's what's happening, um, but I really know that Carter is a hero that is really hard to like. And even the author says that. Um, she's like, uh, Car Carter Mahoney is not a comfortable hero. And this is not always a, a comfortable love story. If you need safe, good guy heroes in every romance you read, this is not the story for you. So like she has this whole preface here talking about this book and like, the trigger warnings and what to know going in. So I appreciate that. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm fully prepared and hopefully you guys are too if you are interested in this book. But um, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's my first indie pubbed book. Um, and something I would say that I am noticing, uh, I feel bad for saying this, but I mean, I, I would say that like the sentence structure is not exactly flowing sometimes. I'm like struggling trying to read it um, because I'm like, oh wait, wait, what tense are we in? Or, you know, there's a lot of commas in one sentence. So, I mean, I know that like, you can, obviously you still can edit and like have editors and pre and beta readers and stuff for indie pub books, but um, I don't know. That's just some random, you know, little thing that I'm noticing with this um, that I just kind of have to get used to. But I'm I'm getting used to it and um, I, I am enjoying it, actually. Um, so I'm eager to see how this romance progresses. I definitely want to see more of a romance and less of a, you know, um, complete jerk. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so that's the update. Um, the sun is going down, so I, it's going to get dark soon. But, um, but yeah, I am enjoying it, and I will let you guys know once I get farther or if I have any other updates before the end of the night. Um, and, yeah. <laughs> Clip today. She's so cute. 
Um, so, oh boy, she wants, she wants my, uh, my watch. Anyways, um, I've read a little bit more of Untouchable last night. Um, there was a live stream, the every Tuesday night live stream that happens with the romance booktubers. And so anyways, I participated in that and it was really fun. And I now on chapter eight, I'm liking it. I'm not loving it. Um, I think I'm going to give it until page 100 before I decide whether I'm going to continue. Um, I got past the brutal scene, so that's good. But um, I'm not loving some of the other elements that this book has in it. Um, I, I just think uh, I'm not buying into it being a romance yet. Um, it's still just more of a um, one-way infatuation where Carter is kind of obsessed with Zoe and Zoe's like not having it. And I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm not, I'm not into it as much as I wanted to be. But anyways, um, so yes, continuing with that, I also listened to more of, um, uh, and they called it Camelot, the uh, Jackie Kennedy fictional book. I'm really enjoying it. I um, am to the part where they're campaigning for his presidency. And um, he actually... This book portrays JFK in a whole different light where um, Jackie has struggled with miscarriages and so trigger warnings for that. Um, but yes, she struggles with miscarriages and uh, at one point she's eight months along and then has a miscarriage and Jack is nowhere to be found. He's actually in uh, on like a pleasure cruise and he's seeing three other women on this cruise and it's just so heartbreaking and you can just feel Jackie, you know, Jackie's pain in that whole, that whole moment. Like not only having a miscarriage, but then also having that, you know, where he wasn't there for her and Bobby steps in to take care of her. So that whole romance is more developing than like how I suspected it would in last vlog. Um, yeah, so I'm not loving JFK, I'm not gonna lie. He is not portrayed in the best light <laughs> in this book. And I knew he was kind of a playboy, but um, but yeah, not to this extent. So it's kind of sad. Um, so yeah, I have a really exciting package coming today. I'm so excited. Um, I am getting text updates for it because I'm that eager to know when it's delivered. Um, but you guys should see that before this vlog, so you'll know what it is. <laughs> it's a, uh, historical fiction mystery box from eBay. Um, I know everyone's really into historical romance mystery boxes, but I have so many historical romances from that haul that I did that I started my channel with that I just wanted to try something different. And I love historical fiction, so anyways, um, yeah, I'm gonna give it a shot. Hi, Lily. So yeah, um, I will continue with Untouchable. I've told myself I'll continue till page 100 to see how it goes. And if I like it, then I'll continue. And if I don't, then I won't. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's how reading is, right? Some people like a book and some people don't. And it's just, you know, up to everyone's taste. I don't judge anyone that loves this book. I completely understand why people love it. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's just not, it's not fully clicking for me yet. So anyways, I will check in with you guys later. <laughs>
I, I am trying to gather my thoughts because I don't want, I especially just don't want Jen to hate me. <laughs> no, um, honestly, so I can totally see why people would love this book because the amount of complexity that's involved in trying to dissect Carter's character is really fascinating um, because obviously with this being a bully romance, that's what is happening. Um, he comes off as a bully to Zoe, but then um, over time, obviously, um, as you read, you're going to grow to like him more and more. So the thing, the, the reason I am deciding to not continue is not because of that, I promise. It's not because of that. It is actually for the reason that I'm questioning a lot of my reading tastes, I guess. Not questioning my taste, like I know my taste, but trying to dissect what I love in a book. And um, I think it's an interesting discussion because, sorry about my lamp too, it's just like right there, but... Um, it's an interesting discussion because I loved all the ugly and wonderful things, but that is not classified as a romance. Um, it's just classified as contemporary, um, a really dark contemporary book. I loved Normal People, which um, has somewhat of a similar vibe to this book where it follows a couple in high school and the guy is super popular and he's trying to, he's trying to keep up an image and um, he manipulates this the girl in the book. Um, and in the end, though, you grow to like both of their characters and root for their, their relationship and love their love story. And maybe that's the distinction. I can really get down with a dark love story, but maybe not a dark romance does that make any sense? I'm struggling trying to figure out why it is that I've either DNF'd or just not loved specifically dark romance. Because the only other book I've read that was dark romance was um, The Kiss Thief by LJ Shen. And I DNF'd after 20 pages. So... Um, I mean, I gave this one a hundred, <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's just something I'm still trying to figure out. I don't know. And maybe it's just the, both of those books I just didn't love, or maybe it's just that I am here for a love story and not necessarily just a romance. Does that make any sense to you guys? Do you guys understand what I'm trying to say? Or if you have any insight into this? Um, because honestly, like, I, th I think that there might be a dark romance out there that I would love. Um, but there, there just has to be some elements to the story that were maybe missing in these books. So anyways, um, yeah, I, I can totally see why Jen loves this and I, I get it. I totally get it. And honestly, if you guys like dark romance and, um, if you can get past the first three chapters in this book, um, go for it. Because I I can see my initial hesitation that I said in the earlier clip about there not being a romance, but it's just one way. That is not the case anymore. Um, 100 pages in, you can tell that Zoe is into Carter. They're, um, you know, she's still like flirtatiously resisting him. But they're going to go on a date um, and, you know, you can see that something's progressing and that there's a deeper level to Carter than what is initially shown in those first chapters. So I would say, like, you know, take my opinion with a grain of salt because obviously I am not the dark romance queen like Jen is. The other romance wreck she gave in that video that she dedicated to me that I honestly think might just be right perfect for me is um uh, a heart of blood and ashes by mila vane i think is her last name um 
I think that this might be what I'm looking for because it's a fantasy romance and I don't mind fantasy if the world building is good. And that I think is a lot of people's complaints with that book is that there is too much world building or that it's a little bit too intense. Um, but I am so down for that. And maybe that's why I love other dark love stories is because there's a lot of world building. I don't know how to describe it. But but anyways, I, I really do want to give that book a try and see if that uh, star-crossed enemies to lovers book is good. Um, I'm so down. I'm so down to try that one. So I'm not giving up. <laughs> um, my ultimate favorite star-crossed enemies to lovers book, if you guys are curious and you're like, okay, wait, so she doesn't like this book. What, what does she like? Um, is uh, The Thorn Birds by Colleen McCullough. Um, it is a, it centers around a family. It's historical fiction, centers around a family in the Australian outback that, um, and it specifically centers around a girl named Maggie and a priest. And it's their love story over decades of time. It also focuses on other characters but the the love story the the underlying romance in that book is twisted and amazing <laughs> so that's like my favorite thing ever when there's um when there is a element to the romance that makes them torn apart you know whether it's duty or um different belief systems or whatever um or age gap you know like Something that makes them resist the love um, until that moment when they don't. That's my favorite. So anyways, that's why I asked Jen for Rex for it. But I'm going to stop with this clip because it's already seven minutes long. Um, I am still waiting for that freaking package to get here. Ah, but um, yeah, I think I'm going to vacuum and um, uh, work is really slow today. So I'm going to vacuum and listen to my audiobook. I'm trying to get it finished before Thanksgiving, so I just need to continue with that book. Um, and yeah. Hey guys. So I just got done filming my, um, my eBay mystery box unboxing. <laughs> and needless to say, oh my goodness, I got so many random Western books. <laughs> um, uh, I never told them that I loved Western, so I'm still confused, but whatever. <laughs> I took three books out of that, um, out of that Hall of 20 that I'm going to keep. Um, but anyways, I am looking for a new read, um, because I finished Wives and Daughters, and then I DNF'd Untouchable. Sorry, my husband was making a funny face. Um, I DNF'd Untouchable, so... Yeah, so I'm looking for a new read. I have um, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg book still, um, but yeah, I'm just I'm just in the mood for another read. I just I need something to keep me going. I'm I don't want to get into a slump. So, anyways, um, I decided I would do a try a chapter and try three books that are very very um, intriguing right now to me that are just calling my name and I decided I would just give it a try, give it a chapter and then choose one that I would read and probably commit to for next week as well. So um, yeah, I'll show you guys three books. So the first book is The Wheel of Fortune by Susan Howitch. Um, so I hauled this recently. Um, I bought this at my favorite childhood bookstore um, in Utah and um, it just sounds so good. Um, it just sounds so good. So yeah, I just, I want to give it a shot. I want to give it a shot. Then the other one I'm going to try is Chase the Wind. Um, basically because of that haul, I'm in the mood for maybe something westerny, but this one for sure is more appealing to me because it's a romance centered western. So yeah, so I decided I would try this. And then, um, I talked about this in my recent five-star predictions, but yeah, I really want to give this a shot too. What the Wind Knows by Amy Harmon. Um, so I'm going to give this a shot and I will let you guys know 
when I finish one of these um, chapters and we'll go from there. So I just finished reading um, the first chapter of these three books. Um, I also keep changing, I'm sorry, but I I get cold and then I get hot and anyways, just changing all the time. Um, I think what I'm gonna do is I actually enjoyed all three of these so much. Um, they're all intriguing for so many different ways. Susan Howitch's book was just incredibly written everything I want in a family saga. So I definitely want to get to this soon. And then Chase the Wind um, was super, super fun to read. Um, very Western, very uh, star-crossed lovers meeting, and it just sounds adorable. Um, so I loved this too, and the writing was really nice. Um, the font is tiny though, like this is small. <laughs> but um, yeah. I enjoyed that one, but I honestly, I loved the first chapter of What the Wind Knows. It was so good. Um, it it followed a girl talking with her grandpa, kind of like in like Princess Bride, basically. Like um, she's talking with her grandpa about um, Ireland and where he was from. And he's saying that, he, she's like, tell me the story about your mom again. And it's weird because I, um, from the back of the book, I had to remind myself, but this is a time travel book. And somehow, I think that she's his mom. She was like, I'm sorry, your your mom has passed away. And he's like, no, she's not. She's here with me. And then they're looking at pictures of his mom. And she's like, she looks so much like me, just older. And he's like, I know. This is gonna be explained. I know it's gonna be explained, but um, yeah, it's time travel. So anyways, it sounds amazing and I loved the writing too. So I'm gonna continue with this and I will let you guys know how it goes um, and what I think. Hey guys, good morning. <laughs> um, it's Thursday morning and um, I just remembered last night as I was doing my triad chapter and started into What the Wind Knows, I remembered that I was doing this buddy read with Dylan. <laughs> and so I scrapped that, although I really am gonna read that next week um, for reals. But I scrapped that and started reading this, Wicked in the Wallflower by Sarah McLean. I think that's how you say her last name. Um, so good so far, which I'm relieved about because after DNFing Untouchable, I was like questioning everything and feeling kind of like bad that I was DNFing people's like favorites. And anyways, you know how you get up in your feels about stuff like that. So... I was worried, but um, I started this one, which I know is a favorite of both Crystal and Carrie. Um, they both love Sarah McLean. So um, I am to chapter five, I want to say, or chapter six, chapter six. And I love it. It started off so strong with their banter back and forth. Um, okay, let me let me backtrack and tell you guys what this book is about. Um, so this book follows a, uh, a girl named Felicity, who is a spinster at this point. She's 27, which, oh my goodness, so old. <laughs> but yeah, so she's 27 and, um, she is trying to land a duke, um, because within the first couple chapters you learn why, but, um, yeah, so she's trying to hook up with this duke and uh then she ends up meeting devil the main guy in this this book um kind of in this weird way where like in the night and like he's in the shadows and um anyways so and he's out for revenge for this duke um because they are related and uh they all have the same dad i believe they're all bastard sons of this dad so technically, like, 
this duke is claiming birthright to this dukedom that they all could be claiming birthright to, I think. Um, this one, this is not fully explained yet, I don't believe. So you guys will have to let me know if I don't understand this right, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm getting at so far with this. Um, and anyways, so he's like, hey, um, if it helps you out, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll help you land this duke. So they, they're gonna team up to try to seduce this duke, um, both for different reasons. Um, but then what's going to happen, I'm sure, is that they're going to fall in love themselves. So it's one of those love stories. Um, so I'm just so down for it. And uh, the thing that I'm really liking about this book so far um, is the writing is very modern for a historical romance. I think I've read a lot of um, classic historical romances recently, um, like Julia Quinn and Lisa Kleypas and stuff, where... <sighs> The writing is just very different compared to this one. Um, so I'm I'm really thinking this is just a breath of fresh air and um, something I needed. <laughs> so I'm so relieved that I'm enjoying it. Um, so yeah, just going to continue with this. I'm actually expecting my um, bed to be delivered today, uh, like my bed frame. But we also have right here, you can see them. Um, these two boxes here are actually our nightstands, um, so I still need to assemble those. <laughs> and uh, furniture assembly is literally the worst. I, if you guys enjoy that, you are one in a million. <laughs> but um, but yeah, I need to I need to get started with like assembling furniture. So maybe I'll try to vlog that a little bit. Um, but anyways, that's my little check-in for today, and we'll just keep going with this vlog. <laughs> just in case you guys are curious, this took me all morning, <laughs> but we set up our nightstands, which I think are so freaking cute. They're very, like, Scandinavian, um, but yeah, I love them. I love, like, wood elements, so there's that, and then here's our nice bed that's not so nicely i'm pretty lazy when it comes to making the bed so yeah whatever but <laughs> yeah it's got beige it's really cute anyways i'm i'm excited about this bed and the nightstand so thought i would show you <laughs> and the aftermath <laughs> the reality oh my gosh such a mess hey guys that was really high pitched <laughs> um yeah happy friday <laughs> so uh oh my goodness such a busy day uh we started off the day um setting up our furniture so we got a new bed we got a new mattress we got new nightstands so finally we have a king bed which is everything <laughs> um yeah we were sleeping in our like guest bed which is a queen and once you upgrade to a king, there's no going back. <laughs> so I've missed that king bed so much. So anyways, I'm glad we... <laughs> First world problems, right? Anyways, um, so I, I know this vlog I think is going to be really long by the time this clip gets to... Like by the time the vlog gets to this point. So I think I might just wrap it up with my wrap up for the week and show you guys what I'm now reading. And then also I have a tiny, tiny book haul for you. Um, so yeah, I DNF'd Untouchable, like I said, and um, I picked up Wicked and the Wallflower by Sarah McLean, and I'm loving it. I'm so enjoying this, which I'm such, re I'm so relieved about because I, I was questioning everything and like wondering if I just for some reason don't like romance anymore, but I do, I do. <laughs> <clears throat> the other books I'm in the middle of still, I'm still reading the Ruth Bader Ginsburg book. Um, I actually kind of put it on hold this week. I don't know why, I just wasn't feeling it. I just wasn't feeling like nonfiction. It's, it's a really good chapter about <laughs> butter is literally just... Her head is pressed against mine. She just wants hugs. Um, 
Uh, anyways, yeah, it's really good. If you guys are looking for um, a very feminist biography about a queen and you know, it's, it's good. But then the other book that I'm still listening to that I need to get read by Thanksgiving um, is, and they called it Camelot by, uh, who is it by? I actually don't know who it's by, I forgot, but um, it's that fictional account of Jackie Kennedy. And it's going, well, I would say it's kind of going downhill for me now because it's getting into um, JFK's presidency and it's focusing a lot on the fact that Jackie is very insecure about J Jack and about his um, infidelity. And you can tell she's just constantly paranoid about which women he's seeing or like how late he's staying out at night. And like, it's just getting really kind of sad, honestly. And then another thing is it's focusing a lot on her fashion sense and her like, you know how iconic she was at, at establishing trends and stuff, but it's almost focusing a little too much on that where I'm kind of like, this is very materialistic and I feel like there's more to her character than this. So anyways, that's where we're at. It's a 16 hour long audiobook, <laughs> and I'm only 10 hours in. So yeah, I gotta, I gotta get going. <laughs> I went thrifting the other day because, um, I had to take back a ton of stuff. We're do not take back. I mean, it's just, we're donating a ton of stuff. Obviously with moving, you just realize the amount of crap you have that you just want to get rid of. <laughs> so we had boxes and boxes in our garage that I finally just was like, all right, I'm just going to commit and go. And then hopefully maybe look at the books there and see if I can find anything. And I did. So yeah, a tiny little thrifting books book haul for you. Hey guys, so the lighting just suddenly got really bad on the other side of my library, so I just flipped you guys around. Sorry for the random cam camera angles, but anyways, um, let's get into this thrift haul. I'll show you the non-romances first. So the first one is this book. It's called Destiny by Sally Bowman. Um, so let me read the back. Edward and Helene, when they met, it was more than coincidence. When they fell in love, it was more than passion. When they thought they'd lost it all, they should have known they were wrong. They should have known it was destiny. <laughs> um, so this is an epic love story, apparently, and it is also historical. Um, it looks like it traces through World War II and um, London on a night ablaze with Nazi bombs and Alabama. Anyways, it just sounded really, really good. <laughs> And right up my alley, I love the big, epic, historical um, love stories with, you know, uh, I think it is also a, like, generational story. So, anyways, I mean, it's it's kind of old and, and beaten up, but I just thought it sounded really good, so I, <laughs> I picked this up. Um, the next one is, oh, and that one was a dollar. <laughs> The, the thrift store I went to is actually sponsored by my local church. And so their prices for, for books are really cheap, which I love. So this is The Royal Secret by Lucinda Riley. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, I picked this up because I know that Lucinda Riley is a favorite of um, Krista from Books and Jams, who... I mention all the time, but I seriously love her. And um, this book specifically, I picked up because I just, it sounds so good, especially if you're watching The Crown like I am. It sounds like it's like very The Crown-esque. So let me read like the little blurb. Every family has skeletons in their closet and the British royal family may be about to add a few more, dot, dot, dot. So yeah, I was like, done sold <laughs> um and i've never read lucinda Roy riley before so maybe this would be a great place for me to start you guys will have to let me know if you have another favorite of hers that you think i should read um but yeah i just could not pass this up this was two bucks so this was the most expensive thing i bought <laughs> okay the next is a series by the same author 
and it's a first printing of every single one of these books and I loved these like these were everything so um so yeah I'll, I'll show you the first one it's called Touch the Wind by Janet Daly and these are in the 80s these were printed um and they're very western and I'll show you the step back because we all love this one is the least dramatic of the three. I'll show you the other ones and you're gonna be like, wow. <laughs> but this one's still fun. I love that it's like captured her with like him grabbing her and, and her still like trying to hang on to it. I'm like, this would never actually happen in real life. <laughs> I'd be freaking out if I were her. <laughs> but yeah, so good. Um, so yeah, here's a step back and I'll just read the back. A great romantic storyteller carries you away from the wealth and splendor of a modern Texas city to the rugged majesty of Mexico's high Sierras. So the um, the main hero in this book is actually a violent, gallant bandido. So yeah, it sounds good. <laughs> and the the gold, like the the foil too, very pretty. So there's that one. And then I think this one's the next one. Yeah, this one's the next one, The Rogue by Janet Daly. And we will show the, the step back. Look at this, guys. Ah! <laughs> I love it. It is so Arizona, too. It's like grabbing her shirt off, and there's the horse in the background, and it just sounds wild. <laughs> So yeah, and actually, um, I think this might involve some sort of age gap because from the back it says that he's trying to keep her away from his son and then ends up falling for her instead. I'm down for that, so down. <laughs> so yeah, here's that one. Okay, the last book is called Ride the Thunder by Janet Daly. <laughs> and this one is also epic and I'm thinking about doing this for my Step Back Saturday because it's just amazing. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my goodness. Like, first of all, her cleavage is epic. Like, I love it. <laughs> and then he has a mustache, which I also love. I'm a sucker for like a mustached hero. And then like, there's this random goat like cut in here, which I thought was hilarious. And then they're like, obviously like coming near the fire and there's some sort of, you know, escapade happening here. I just thought it was awesome. <laughs> so yeah, I picked this up. It's set in Idaho, I guess. So that's, that's fun. Um, so yeah, that's my little book haul for you. <laughs> I think these are going to be great. I'm actually very excited about all of these. And it's kind of a makeup for the fact that my <laughs> um, historical fiction unboxing was such a disaster. <laughs> Honestly, like this is this is the kind of thing I was more looking at, more looking forward to. But other than that, I think I might end the vlog here. Um, please like and comment. I reply to every single comment. And I would love to have you guys also subscribe if you want to see more from me. Um, I have very exciting videos coming up. So you guys, if you have stuck around this long, you will know something that other people don't my bookshelves are coming in on Black Friday. So yes, they will be shipped and delivered to my house Black Friday. I am gonna make my husband and all the family that are visiting for Thanksgiving set them up, <laughs> help me set them up. So they have to be mounted to the wall, like they're nine foot high bookshelves that need to be mounted. So, um, so it is gonna be a project. But once those are set up, Oh man, I have, I'm going to vlog the whole thing um, and vlog me organizing them. And you know, you guys can see my whole book collection. Um, they're all just piled in boxes right here. You've probably seen glimpses of them, but anyways, yeah, I'm so excited. So, you know, maybe that's a more enticement for you to subscribe. So you can see that coming soon. Um, but anyways, I will just talk to you guys in another video. Bye.